This is one of Beijing's oldest, most ancient hutongs, and it used to be called Armour Factory Alley. Um, many years ago, I read a story about a, an English girl who was murdered in Peking in 1937, and this is where the story started, here on this alley. She lived here. Edgar Snow, the famous American journalist, lived here. I saw a picture of her. I researched her story. The murder was unsolved, and I wanted to find out what happened. She lived here on this alley, and so this is where the story starts. But her body was found on a cold January day in 1937, not far from here, at a place that was known as the Fox Tower. Pamela Werner's body was discovered here, at what was then Wasteland, at the foot of the ancient Tartar city wall that used to run all the way around Beijing, um, and next to the Fox Tower, a tower that was always deserted because the Chinese believed superstitiously that there were fox spirits there. Immediately, there were three suspects that the police looked at. Pamela's father, E.T.C. Werner, a former British consul, her former headmaster at her school in Tianjin, and finally, one of the leading dentists in Peking, who it turned out lived a whole other life. These were three men who knew Pamela. These were three men who were suspected, and these were three men who lived very different lives in Peking. As soon as the investigation started, the first thing it revealed was the seedy underbelly of Beijing. The old legation quarter where all the embassies were was where the uptight and upright members of the diplomatic corps and the business community lived. And they were shocked and horrified by Pamela's murder. What they were even more worried about was that it brought them into collision with an area of Peking that they didn't like to talk about. An area of bars and brothels, drug dealers and pimps and prostitutes. An area known as the Badlands. And it was to the Badlands that the investigation kept returning to the seedy underbelly of foreign Peking that embarrassed everyone involved and revealed scandals among the white community in Peking that they would much rather have left buried. Technically, the Badlands were Chinese territory under Chinese control. So the case was assigned to their lead detective, the chief of Chinese detectives for Peking, Colonel Han Shi Qin. But in nearby Tianjin was an ex-Scotland Yard detective who'd moved from England to China, Detective Chief Inspector Dick Dennis. The two men worked the case together, the first time in Chinese history that a foreign detective and a Chinese detective worked together to solve the murder of Pamela Werner. The big question on everyone's lips in Peking that January 1937, would this unique collaboration work? Throughout the first half of 1937, Colonel Han and DCI Dennis chased the suspects in the Pamela Werner murder through Beijing. They chased them through the legation quarter and privilege. They chased them through the badlands and the seedy side of Peking, and they chased them through the Fox Tower. But ultimately, they weren't successful. And then in July 1937, the Japanese finally invaded, and the investigation was ended. What it had revealed is that the foreign community in Peking was no more united than anyone thought. Deep within its heart, there was terror. War came to China. World War, civil war, internment. The suspects in the case, the detectives in the case, were scattered to the four wind. And ultimately, Pamela Werner was forgotten in the revolutionary tumult of China that followed the end of the Second World War. In the course of researching and writing Midnight in Peking, I became obsessed with Pamela. I traveled the length and breadth of China, looking for any documentation, any records that might shed light on the murder investigation and on her life. I traveled to England, America, Hong Kong, wherever I thought there might be some trace of her. I found people who knew her when she was a schoolgirl in China. And eventually, in an archive in London, I found a private investigation that had been conducted into Pamela, one outside of the official police investigation, one conducted during the Japanese occupation of Peking in total secrecy. And when I took that investigation, and I cross-referenced it with the official police investigation, and then I cross-referenced that with the newspaper reports and the autopsies, what I discovered that was the murder of Pamela Werner was a crime even more shocking and even more horrific than the detectives and the Peking public at the time had, had even imagined. So I hope you read the book and I hope that you find out that in some way we can bring some justice to Pamela Werner and try and recreate the old Peking of the 1930s, the old Peking of the Fox Tower, a Peking that is now long gone.